Hello and welcome to Artifacts with Edie, a live show and tell of the artifacts from the Summit County Historical Society. My name is Edie Steiner and I'm a music therapist with Akron Public Schools at Bridges Learning Center. I'm also the shepherdess of the Summit County Historical Society. Today, we were hoping that we would be broadcasting to you live from outside SUMA Healthcare's, but I'm sorry, we, due to the weather, we were unable to do that. But on Friday, Salem Boo showed that she was smart like a border collie by taking home the weekly trophy in our game show, Are You Smarter Than a Border Collie? Today's episode will actually be the first in the series this week that helps you to study for our big game show on Friday, Are You Smarter Than a Border Collie? I'm rooting for you, so make sure you study the Akron and Summit County history we're going to present today. So good morning to our scholars watching from Bridges Learning Center and a special hello to the emerging scholars at North and East Community Learning Centers. Like I said, I'd hope to broadcast to you live, but I'm a fair weather reporter, so the weather didn't cooperate. So we're back here at the Carriage House at the Summit County Historical Society. But all this week, we're going to be learning about the history of Akron's hospitals. Today, we're going to learn about Akron City Hospital, which is now part of the SUMA Health System. What a unique field trip we are going to have this week. But before we get started, do you know what a hospital is? Most of us were born, out, born in one, and many of us have been or will be to one at least one time or another in our lives. We're curious, where were you born? I was born at Fairview General Hospital in Fairview Park, Ohio, while Leanne, the president and CEO of the Summit County Historical Society, she was born down in Zanesville, Ohio at Bethesda Hospital. So hospitals are defined as institutions in which people um, who are injured or need medical attention or surgical care go. Simply put, they're places you go when you're sick or when you're injured to get better. So we hope that none of us have to go to the hospital very often, but we know when you do that you can count on a hospital to get you well again, especially our hospitals in Akron and Summit County. Hello, my name is Dr. David Custodio and I'm the president of Summit Akron City and St. Thomas Hospitals. I wanna say thanks to Artifacts with Edie, who are allowing us to say thank you to all our frontline workers here at Summit Health. In fact, we're saying thank you to all the frontline workers providing care regardless of the hospital system. You guys are all amazing uh, and we appreciate all that you're doing, all the essential workers are doing. But specifically our healthcare workers uh, and providers at SUMA, the entire uh, hospital staff in fact has been doing a wonderful job taking care of our patients and families throughout this pandemic. We want to say thank you to all the community support that we've received whether it's parades, food, other shows of support. It's really helping to uplift the morale of our staff. Um, now that things are loosening up a bit I want you to all to make sure to wear your staff or masks and the like when you're in public and practice social distancing. But we also want you to know that the hospital is open and ready to take care of you. We're taking all the necessary precautions to sanitize, maintain social distancing, and follow all the rules and to bring you safely back into the healthcare environs. We've been caring for patients this whole time and, uh, and we welcome the opportunity to take care of you. If you have necessary healthcare, we'll be here for you. So once again, thank you to Artifacts with Edie for allowing us to do this. And thank you again to all our healthcare heroes at SUMA Health. Have a great day. In the late 1800s, Akron was a growing city. More and more businesses were adding jobs and new ones were moving here to Akron as well. They needed workers. So many people came to Akron to fill these jobs. Companies such as BF Goodrich Rubber Company, Altman and Miller, and later the Goodyear Rubber Company all moved here. So people moved to Akron and Summit County with their families, but there was not enough homes for everybody to live in during this time. And we call this an increase in population. When there's an increase in population, there can also be a shortage of living spaces. And this can force more than one family to live in a space that was built for just a single family to live. So during this time, there was also outbreaks of diseases such as smallpox, and this would spread very quickly through these very crowded living spaces. 
Does this sound a little bit familiar? Remember, we're talking over 100 years ago. So in 1883, a man by the name of Boniface Derue donated his entire estate worth $10,000 to be used for the founding of a, and this is a quote, city hospital where inmates and infirm persons without distinction of race, nationality, color, or sex may be provided for and without charge or compensation in the case of inability to pay for the same. Mr. Daru saw a need to better medical care and wanted to help. And are you starting to see a pattern with kindness and compassion for all people in the city of Akron and in Summit County? Mr. Daru was a blacksmith by trade and he was virtually an unknown man in Akron. But by 1891, the $10,000 that Mr. Daru had donated had grown to $10,766.10. But there was still more money that was needed to build a hospital that many knew that the people of the city of Akron needed. So also seeing the need for the hospital was Ohio Columbus Barber, known better as O.C. Barber. He donated $11,000 towards the construction of a hospital in Akron. Barber was a very wealthy man and he owned Diamond Match Company and became the founder and the namesake of the neighbor of our neighboring town in Akron, which is called Barberton, Ohio. O.C. Barber was a man who was very generous and he wanted to make sure that he was able to help people with the money that he had made. He was also would also be a very important benefactor for City Hospital. In 1891, Thomas W. Cornell made a donation of $10,000 for the hospital. Cornell would later become the chief owner of the Akron Gas Company, and he also helped to organize First Nation Bank, which he became the president of. Now, with these three donations from Daru, Barber, and Cornell in a wonderful mathematical story, there's now more than $30,000 that was available to build a hospital. So on October 11th, 1892, in the former mansion of Dr. Samuel W. Barges, City Hospital became a reality with 20 beds. It's the first hospital to treat adults in the city of Akron. Dr. W.C. Jacobs performs the first operation on the new hospital, which was located on East Market Street. As the hospital continued to serve the needs of the Akron population, it was expanded on with the addition of the newly constructed Barges Annex, which was built next to the Barges Mansion, of course, in 1898. And this provided space and modern facilities, such as state-of-the-art operating rooms. In 1895, the School of Nursing opened at City Hospital. This would provide the hospital with groups of trained nurses like me to provide care for patients. I'm Alexis Donay, a registered nurse at Suma Akron City Hospital. During that time, the first class consisted of two nurses and they studied for two years. Once they graduated, they were on duty for 12 hours a day. Civic pride in the new annex for the hospital brought in all types of donations from the community. They ranged from a lawnmower from the Page Brothers, Page Brothers and Company to 150 feet of garden hose from the employees at BF Goodrich, two large um, ranges from Tappan uh, by were donated by the Rice and Company, and old linen and one jar of jam was donated from Mrs. Mustill, who appeared in our episodes on the Ohio and Erie Canal. Also, the Buckeye Mower and Reaper Works, a farm equipment manufacturer here in Akron, Ohio, donated a cow to the new hospital. Now, this may sound a little strange today, but the cow provided milk and cream for the hospital, and the people that were being cared for there and their families. And at this time, despite its growth, Akron still had lots of open space and City Hospital had five acres land for their new cow to graze on. 
The Barges Mansion Orchard provided fresh fruits for the patients and also they enjoyed sitting out on the lawn of the property. As Akron continued to grow, the demand for more medical services continued. So O.C. Barber once again donated more money to help fund the construction of the new city hospital in 1902. He donated an additional $203,000, which is around $6 million today. So then on June 5th, 1904, the new city hospital just east of the Barges Mansion was dedicated. 10,000 people from Akron and the surrounding communities showed up for the opening. The new hospital is four and a half stories tall. It has 70 beds and is made of brick and stone. The architects for the building were the firm of Charles E. Henry and Son and the Barges Mansion then um, now becomes the nurse's home. Just nine days later on June 12th in 1904, the first baby was delivered at City Hospital. Who was the first baby born in this hospital in Akron? Well, it was Barbara Lawson Harrington, who was named for O.C. Barber and Marie Lawson, the hospital superintendent at the time. In the 1910s, births at home became a thing of the past as clean and well-maintained maternity wards became the preferred place for mothers to have their babies. By the 1920s, having a baby in the hospital was a norm. Dr. Bob Smith came to City Hospital in 1910 as a new intern. Later, he would become better known as Dr. Bob, co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. In 1929, Mr. and Mrs. Harvey S. Firestone donated $350,999 to fund the Six Sorry Nurses Home which was dedicated in September, 1929. Once again, in the 1950s, $250,000 was donated for the School of Nursing Annex to be built. Their donations now totaled $600,000, over a half a million dollars today, to City Hospital. Today, that donation would equal about $8 million. So this type of continuing support for the community, from the community and private businesses has and will be the key to the continuing success of the hospital. By 1950, City Hospital continued to grow and expand its services and a new name was unveiled for the hospital. So in 1955, City Hospital was renamed to Akron City Hospital, a name which identifies the city that it's in and where it's located. And a very important baby was born there. The author of today's episode of Artifacts with Edie, Dave Gates. Boy, is he old. Akron City Hospital merged with St. Thomas Medical Center to form SUMA Healthcare System in 1989. When these two hospitals joined together, they were able to better serve our community. And even today, Akron City Hospital continues to grow and build for a better tomorrow. With the new building or annex on Ford Street, which opened in 2019, the hospital prepares for many years of continued service to the Akron community. Hospitals has lots of equipment that help us recover from being sick or needing surgery. Some things in hospitals are really big like x-ray machines, which were actually a Strongsville, Ohio invention, by the way. And sometimes they're very small, such as a thermometer. Thermometers are used to take our temperatures or find out how hot or cold our bodies are inside. So usually your temperature will be around 98.6 degrees and a thermometer shows that we are healthy or unhealthy, which is above or below 98.6 degrees. So back in 1892, when W.C. Jacobs was the first person to use a thermometer, where? In the Western Reserve, here at Akron City Hospital. Today, we use thermometers all the time. We use them in hospitals, doctor's offices, and even at home in maybe our garden to find out what the temperature is outside. So hospitals have been one of the most important tools, um, also have, I'm sorry, hospitals also have one of the most important tools that we all need to help us get better. And that is, can you guess what it is? It's people, 
it's moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and uncles and sisters and cousins and people like you and me. Does anyone in your family um, work as a doctor or a nurse or a nurse's aide or work as one of the custodial employees at a hospital? Many, many amazing people help us every day by making sure that the hospitals stay nice and clean and that we all stay healthy. Without these dedicated, hardworking people, hospitals could not function. So let's get to our review and find out what is the artifact of the day. Question one, who is the relatively unknown person who donated the value of their estate to help start a hospital for all people? Was it A, O.C. Barber, B, Boniface Deru, C, Bob Smith, or D, Harvey Firestone? If you said B, Boniface Deru, you too have been listening very, very well this morning. Good job. Question two, in what ways do you see a pattern with kindness and compassion for all people in Akron and Summit County? Now, this is an opinion question and more of an extended response. So remember to go back through the episode and support your answer with the facts that you just heard. Or even past episodes would work for that. So let's move on to question three. Name two things that the community donated when the new annex of City Hospital happened. If you said a lawnmower, 150 feet of garden hose, two large ranges from Tappan, linen, a jar of jam from Mrs. Mustel, or a cow, then move over. You are the new historian in town. So are you ready to find out what the artifact of the day is? Today's artifact is iconic, which means that when you see it, you will know immediately who would use it and what their job was because they are holding it. The artifact of the day is the doctor's black bag. Maybe you've seen it in this familiar painting by Norman Rockwell. Really, the doctor's bag is a portable office. And before hospitals, and especially in rural areas of the United States, um, it was important that doctors had all of their things with them when they made house calls. If someone was sick, they would send for a doctor. The doctor kept some staple items in the bag, but then would add to it items that might be um, for the person specifically they were going to visit, depending on their symptoms or how that person described how they felt. The doctor's bag has lots of pockets and it's tough. It could be tossed into a horse pulled carriage without breaking the bottles and the vials inside. What types of things do you think are in a leather doctor's bag? And when you open it up, do you think that there might be a stethoscope, a thermometer, bandages, medicines? The, the, end, the possibilities are endless. So another question though, it's growing up, did you pretend to have a doctor's or a nurse's bag? Lynn Pressman had the idea of designing a children's doctor's bag for her family company, the Pressman Toy Company, when she was vice president. The toy was very popular because it also helped children to practice going to a doctor's appointment, much like the children who practiced using ration stamps. Mrs. Pressman later became one of the first successful women leaders to, um, of a large company when she became the president of the Pressman Toy Corporation in 1959. We are all very grateful for all of the hard work and the dedication by the professionals that all of the professionals are doing to help the community during the COVID-19 virus. Doctors, nurses, technicians, aides, and other healthcare industry personnel deserve our collective thank you. And without hospitals, they would not be able to do this essential work. We would also like to thank the local volunteers for making productive equipment for hospital workers. Donna Pinto and a number of her friends in Hudson, Ohio, have sewn over 7,000 masks to help frontline workers in local hospitals. Well, 
We look forward to telling you about more items in the doctor's black bag similar to the Summit County Historical Society's Remember When program for our next episode. So I will see you tomorrow at 1130 for another episode of Artifacts with Edie, where I show and tell the artifacts from the Summit County Historical Society, where history is always within reach. See you tomorrow.